Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine, where we talk about mysteries, thrillers, and horror movies. This week, my friends, I'll be going over my favorite horror film of all time. That film, my friends, is the brilliant South Korean horror film, The Wailing. Released in 2016, The Wailing was directed by South Korean director Na Hong Jin, who previously directed the amazing and underrated thriller, the Chaser. The Wailing tells the story of a small Korean town, plagued by a disease that causes the residents to brutally murder one another. The events seem linked to the appearance of a mysterious Japanese man who recently moved into town. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film and explaining the crazy plot twist ending and what I believe it truly means. Director Na Hong Jin purposely makes this a film open to viewer interpretation. There are many theories and analyses online about the film's themes, meanings, and what is really happening on screen. I'll be doing my best to give my thoughts and explanations of the film, but keep in mind there are really no wrong answers as some things are left so open-ended. My interpretations may heavily differ from yours, and there might be things that I missed that I would love to discuss with you in the comment section down below. If you enjoy this video, make sure to click that like button which will help all of us from catching the mysterious disease and going insane. But without further ado, sit back and relax and join me as we explore the mysteries in The Wailing. Our the movie begins with a verse from the Bible, Luke 24, 37. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet, it is I, myself. Touch me and see, a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. A quote that significance quietly looms in the back of our characters' minds throughout the film. An old man is quietly sitting at the edge of a lake, baiting a fishing line with a worm while mumbling something inaudible. We meet our main character, Zhang Gu, a police officer living in the small town of Gok Song, which translates into whale. He lives with his wife, mother-in-law, and young daughter, Hyo Jin. One early morning, Zhang Gu is called out to the scene of a grisly murder of an entire family, committed by a man named Hung Guk. The man seems completely out of it and has boils all over his body. They go to the man's house and see that he was involved in some type of witchcraft or black magic. In the room, we see a large nest he was possibly sleeping in surrounded by lit candles. There is a dead crow lying on the floor next to a crucifix and what appears to be a burned Bible. Cue the ominous title sequence. Zhang Gu and his partner Sung Bok are discussing rumors they heard about a mysterious Japanese man who just moved into town. Ever since he moved into town, several people have died or gone insane, with the most recent incident being the man Hung Guk murdering his two neighbors. Zhang Gu states that the lab results found large traces of mushrooms in his system and believes that is what made him go insane. Sung Bok doesn't believe mushrooms had anything to do with it and that the Japanese man is somehow involved with everything that's been happening. So the the question is, was it mushrooms or a Japanese man that made him go on a murderous rampage? Well, in Mario's case, it's both. The lights suddenly go out and a naked woman briefly appears at the front doors, scaring the hell out of the officers. The next day, Zhang Gu buys his daughter a new hair clip and spends some quality time with her down by the river. He looks across the river and sees the Japanese man sitting on the other side. That night, the police are again called out to a grisly crime scene. A house has completely burned to the ground and the survivors appear to have turned into zombie-like individuals. A crazed man and woman attack Zhang who freaks out instead of defending himself. After his brave reaction, Zhang Gu notices the Japanese man watching the events unfold from the crowd and their eyes briefly meet. This crime scene was a lot more hectic than the previous one and it's obvious that the small town police force is overwhelmed. Back at the police station, Hyo Jin brings her father a fresh pair of clothes and drops her hair clip on the way out. Zhang Gu realizes that the crazy woman who attacked him was the same woman who appeared naked in front of the station the previous night. The woman's body was covered in the same boils as Hung Guk. The next day, her dead body is discovered hanging from a tree. A detective tells Zhang Gu that the fire didn't kill the woman's family, but that she actually stabbed them to death. While guarding the house, Zhang Gu meets a mysterious young woman who tells him that she was a witness to the crime. She says she heard the Japanese man is a ghost and if you keep seeing him around, He receives a call from his partner, and upon returning, the woman is no longer there. Bro, you had 
one job. He then sees the Japanese man practically naked on all fours feasting on a dead deer. The man is wearing a fundoshi, a traditional Japanese cloth-like underwear made of cotton. Must be pretty comfortable for him to be walking around in public like that. I wonder if they have those on Amazon. The man approaches Zhang Gu looking absolutely terrifying with blood all over his face and bright red eyes. He wakes up screaming in bed showing that it was just a nightmare. A major aspect of this film is the fear of the unknown. Gok Song is a small town in the countryside and everyone knows each other. When the Japanese man moves into town, the rumors begin flying through the roof. The viewer, much like the residents of Gok Song, have no idea what to believe, what is real and what is false. We receive information just like the characters in the film, through whispers and in this case, nightmarish visions that blend together with reality. Director Na Hong Jin doesn't hold your hand with mindless exposition, rather he leaves the audience to make their own opinions and interpretations as to the events unfolding on screen. They meet with a hunter named Yoki, who claims to have encountered the Japanese man eating a dead deer, just like in Jonggu's nightmare. They enlist him in showing them the way to the Japanese man's house. They come across the dead deer's carcass and it suddenly starts to storm. Yoki tells them that the house is just over the hill and refuses to go any further. Jonggu tries to get him to stay but accidentally causes him to fall. He gets back up and vows to get them fired. <laughs> This scene had me absolutely cracking up when I first saw it, but upon subsequent viewings, I realized that it's more important than I originally thought. Jyoki says that they deserve to get scorched by lightning and it immediately happens to him. This is meant to show how dangerous our words can be and that we must watch what we say to others. Our words, no matter how malicious or harmless in intent, have consequences and can always come back to haunt us. This point is driven further home in the next scene at the hospital with Jyoki's wife, portrayed by by actress Lee Jung Un, now widely recognized for her brilliant role as the housekeeper in Parasite. You can take all the preventative measures that you want to avoid something, however, the moment that you wish harm upon others, you will suffer the consequences that render all the previous good you have done useless. This is an underlying lesson that has huge significance later on in the film. Zhang Gu is then drawn to a huge commotion coming from Hung Guk's hospital room, the man who committed the very first murders. Hung Guk's body begins to violently shake and contort all over the place, almost as if he were being controlled or possessed. The bones in his neck seemingly start to break on their own and put him out of his misery. Much to Zhang Gu's dismay, Hu Jin is the next one to mysteriously fall ill. She wakes up screaming in the middle of the night, saying that a strange man keeps banging on the door trying to get in. If we look at her body movement, she is violently shaking and contorts her body just like Hung Guk at the hospital. The next day, Hu Jin seemingly appears better and is stuffing her face with fish, which Zhang Gu says she never usually eats. Seems fishy. As a result, her grandma says she will be contacting a shaman to assess the situation. Sung Bok enlists the help of his nephew Yang Yi Sam, a Japanese-speaking deacon, so they can go talk to the stranger. This scene and the one before it are very interesting to me because they are the first time that the Wailing's crucial theme of faith is introduced. The mother-in-law is enlisting the help of a Buddhist shaman. Sung Bok brings his deacon nephew and wears a rosary around his neck, showing that when facing the unknown, people will lean toward and look to their faith for answers. I'd also like to point out that throughout the film, Zhang Gu never truly places his faith in anything. He briefly seems skeptical about the idea of a shaman and pokes fun at Song Book for wearing the rosary. They arrive at the man's house, but he is not home. They conduct an illegal search of his house, hoping to find some kind of clue that connects him to what's been happening and find some truly terrifying things. Zhang Gu finds a type of shrine or altar with all sorts of different things. We see the head of a black goat and the skull of another surrounded by horns. This heavily resembles resembles the head of a sabbatical goat, commonly associated with black magic and the devil. We also see that a decapitated Buddha statue in front of what I assume to be the parents of the Japanese man. The Buddha statue oddly has a red string wrapped around it. The statue appears very much desecrated by the man and is placed below the pictures of his parents, possibly showing that he holds his parents in much higher regard than a god. While Zhang Gu does appear confused about what he sees, he probably doesn't realize the darker implications of what lies in front of him. 
him, referring back to his lack of faith. To his horror, Song Book finds a hidden room filled with pictures of the dead citizens of Gok Sung. The pictures depict people before and after their deaths, as well as pictures of those who are still alive. The pictures heavily imply that the man has been stalking the citizens of Gok Sung and seems to incriminate him in their deaths. Upon taking a closer look, he sees what appears to be the personal belongings of some of the residents. We can see things such as a watch, a necklace, and even a strand of hair, among other things. Isam, who was supposed to keep watch, is suddenly attacked by the man's guard dog. Jean-Gu brings up the very pressing question. <laughs> the stranger suddenly returns to his home and calms the dog. He enters the house in silence and looks completely intimidating. <laughs> Sungbok then reveals that the Japanese man was in possession of one of Hyujin's shoes. jong gu confronts his daughter and asks her how the man got one of her shoes. She admits to having met the stranger, but instead of disclosing any details, she goes off on jong gu <laughs> That night, while his daughter is asleep, he goes through her things looking for information. He sees several disturbing images in her notebook, including a drawing of what appears to be the devil reaching out for something with his hand. He is surrounded by several crucifixes, with one in particular being pointed out with a flashlight. This drawing foreshadows later events in the film. While examining her body, he lifts up her dress and finds the exact same boils as the previous victims of the disease. Hyojin wakes up and absolutely goes off on him. 말을 하라고 이 씨발로마 it becomes clear that Hyojin is now possessed, which has jong gu desperate for a cure. He returns to the stranger's house with Isam and learns that he burned all the incriminating pictures and belongings. jong gu then proceeds to completely destroy the man's shrine and kills his dog with a pickaxe. <laughs> He gives the man three days to get out of town or he will end up just like his dog. The entire ordeal elicits zero emotional response from the man who simply watches the events unfolding. The next day, a black goat is gutted and hung in front of jong Gu's house. jong Gu wakes up to the screams of his horrified family but is somehow immobilized and unable to get up. This would appear to be a direct response to his actions against the stranger. They return home from the doctor to find that Hyo Jin has stabbed the woman watching over her with scissors. Her possession has become more aggressive, seemingly as a direct result of jong Gu's act of violence and threats against the stranger. sung Book tells him that he has been experiencing pain and nightmares ever since they went to his house. He says that they must do something before the stranger gets them first. The shaman named Il Guang finally arrives looking stylish as heck. He discovers a dead crow that was planted inside of a jar and says that they are dealing with a truly wicked spirit. He performs a colorful and loud ritual that elicits a powerful response from Hyo Jin and eventually puts her to sleep. jong Gu admits to having recently disturbed the stranger, whom the shaman says is actually an evil ghost or demon. jong Gu wonders why his innocent daughter was chosen of all people. The shaman replies that the demon simply cast out the bait and his daughter took it. This was hinted out in the very first scene in the film, where the Japanese man is baiting a fishing hook with a worm. The police are called out to the house of a man named Park Chun Bei, where several of his family members are found dead inside a well. The front of the house looks eerily similar to that of Jean Gu's, as if a ritual had just taken place. Park Chun Bei's body is discovered by the stranger inside of his work truck, located somewhere in the woods. He seems to be in the later stages of possession, as he now appears lifeless, covered in boils, and murdered his entire family. Both the stranger and the shaman are now preparing for their own respective ritual. The stranger is seen praying underneath her waterfall with the mysterious woman watching from afar. Didn't know she had an old man fetish. The shaman is conducting what he calls a death hex that is meant to drive the evil spirit out of Hyojin's body. He tells jong Gu that it is important he does nothing to interfere with or taint the ritual. Both rituals are seemingly happening simultaneously and start out at different musical tempos. The shaman's ritual immediately starts out loud, fast, and extravagant. While the stranger's ritual starts off with the slow beating of a drum, the tempo eventually catches up and appears to sync up with that of the shamans. <laughs> The 
The stranger has a photo of Park Chun-bae displayed on his altar, and his ritual seems to be bringing Chun-bae back to life. The shaman chops down a totem and begins piercing it with metal stakes, which seems to be placing Hyo Jin in excruciating pain with each blow. It appears that Lee Guang's ritual is now hurting the stranger as he falls to the ground crying in pain and attempts to crawl away. As the ritual progresses, Hyo Jin's body begins to violently contort. She begs Zhang Gu to make it stop, and he interrupts the ritual, despite the shaman's clear instructions not to interfere. The Japanese man wakes up shivering and afraid, and the mysterious woman appears before him. Hyo Jin is rushed to the hospital and falls into some type of coma. Zhang Gu and Isam consult the father of the local church, who dismisses their claim claims that the Japanese man is evil. He states that those are merely rumors that can't be proven unless you've seen them with your own eyes. It is at this point that I believe Zhang Gu's faith reaches an all-time low. The shaman's ritual seems to have caused more harm than good, and the church refuses to get involved and help him. He enlists the help of his friends with the intent to kill the Japanese man and end things once and for all. This is, in my opinion, where the film enters its most confusing territory. We see the Japanese man running over to Park chun Base truck to find him no longer there. He follows Chunbei's trail back to his house, which is being searched by Zhang Gu and his crew who are looking for him. We see that Park Chunbei has been revived into a flesh-eating zombie, similar to the residents of the house that burned down in the beginning of the film. Zhang Gu and his friends get absolutely brutalized by the zombie Chunbei, and this scene totally reminded me of something straight out of a horror B-movie. <laughs> Just like Hung Guk at the hospital in the beginning of the film, Park Chun Bei's bones suddenly break from inside him, killing him for good. Zhang Gu then notices the Japanese man hiding in the trees, who was watching the events unfold the whole time. They immediately begin chasing after him in a very intense chase sequence. The old man reaches the edge of a cliff and realizes he has nowhere else to go. Zhang Gu and his crew reach the end of the cliff, but to their surprise, he is nowhere to be found. We now see the true desperation Zhang Gu feels to to save Hyo Jin as he breaks down in tears. <laughs> We see that the stranger is actually barely hanging on to the edge of the cliff. He falls to the ground but remains unnoticed by the group. This next scene had me confused and truly in doubt about its meaning for years. As we hear the group walking away, the Japanese man suddenly bursts into tears. <laughs> This is the first time that the Japanese man has displayed any type of emotion. Ever since coming across the mysterious woman at his house, the Japanese man has appeared more human-like, having displayed a range of emotions from fear, shock, and despair. The stranger then sees the mysterious woman looking at him from a distance. He seemingly begins running after her as we see Zhang Gu driving away and failing to follow the basic rules of the road. The stranger suddenly falls from the side of the mountain and is struck by Zhang Gu's truck. Zhang Gu and his friends see the man they came to kill, lying dead on the floor before them. They throw his body over the mountain as the mysterious woman watches the events unfold from above. At this time, Il Guang says, <laughs> Zhang Gu rushes over to his daughter at the hospital, who now appears to have returned to normal. We see that Yang Yi Sam is now at the hospital healing from his injuries. A newscast on the TV claims that a suspect has been arrested in connection to the mushroom tonic case that the police believe have been causing people to go insane. Yi Sam is haunted by visions of the stranger and everything he has witnessed the past few days. He is called out to a crime scene in which Song Book, Zhang Gu's partner, has now gone insane and brutally murdered his landlady. Back at home, Home, Hyojin is seemingly healed, and Zhang Gu attempts to clean up the items left by the shaman. His mother in law tells him to leave it, as they have the shaman to thank for everything. He receives several calls from Il Guang, but ignores them. This shows that Zhang Gu believes his daughter was healed not because of the shaman, but thanks to his actions for getting rid of the stranger. The shaman arrives in front of Zhang Gu's home, and his nose suddenly begins to bleed profusely. The woman emerges from the shadows and causes him to throw up uncontrollably. <laughs> He returns to his home completely terrified, packs up all his belongings, and attempts to leave town. His vehicle is then swarmed by thousands of locusts flying against his windshield, causing Il Guan to drive back into town. He finally gets a hold of Zhang Gu over the phone and tells him that he must return to his daughter immediately. The shaman says that the mysterious woman is the evil spirit causing harm to the town, and that the Japanese man was actually a shaman trying to stop her. The events of the past few days have caused Isam to have 
heavily question his faith. Seeing as his uncle committed murder after they got rid of the stranger, this leads him to believe that the evil has not yet gone. He returns to the stranger's house armed with a sickle and sees light coming from inside a cave in the distance. Zhang returns home to find his daughter missing. He goes to look for her and comes across the woman. The woman tells him that Hyo Jin is still possessed by an evil spirit and that the Japanese man is still alive. She says that he is a demon and death cannot touch him. The woman says that she set up a trap to catch the demon and all Zhang Gu needs to do is have faith and his daughter will be saved. Hyo Jin returns to the house clearly possessed once again. Now in the cave, Isam comes face to face with the Japanese man who appears very much alive. Isam believes the man to be the devil himself. Himself. He neither denies nor confirms the accusation, stating that Isam already made up his mind about who he is. Zhang Gu then receives a call from the shaman, who tells him not to believe the woman. In turn, the woman says that the shaman and the stranger are actually working together. She states that when the demon is caught in the trap, the rooster will cry three times. He must not cross the threshold of his house until after the third cry. He hears the second cry and asks her why all this is happening. She says that her father sinned when her father suspected another and killed him. In this moment, his family's fate relies solely on his faith. The woman grabs him by the arm and asks him not to go, her skin now appearing gray and colorless. Zhang Gu notices his daughter's hair clip on the floor behind the woman. We see that she is wearing the sweater of the infected woman at the bar, and that she was wearing Park Chun Bae's jacket in the beginning of the film. This convinces him that the woman is responsible for everything, and he rushes home. He crosses the threshold of his home, which causes the flowers placed on his gate by the woman to wither. This is the same withered plant seen at Hongguk's house, showing the guardian was also trying to save him. <laughs> Back in the cave, the Japanese man says to Isam, touch me and see. He then reveals his true form to be that of a demon and takes a picture of the stunned and terrified deacon. He quotes Luke 24, 37, as seen in the beginning of the film, which shows that doubt ultimately led Isam to his demise. This very moment was foreshadowed in Hyo Jin's notebook earlier in the film. Zhang Gu returns home and to his horror, discovers his wife and mother-in-law have been brutally murdered by Hyo Jin. Hyo Jin is standing across from a completely distraught Zhang Gu, who calls out to her several times to no response. Having failed to protect and save Hyo Jin, the woman sits outside in silence, listening to Zhang Gu's wails of agony. Rain once again befalls the town of Gok Song as Il Guang drives up to Zhang Gu's residence. He walks in and sees a completely mindless Hyo Jin sitting in front of her house, similar to Hong Guk in the beginning of the film. He enters the house and takes pictures of the dead wife and mother in law. He also takes a picture of a mortally wounded Zhang Gu, who was presumably stabbed by Hyo Jin off screen. The shaman opens the trunk to his car and drops a box revealing the pictures of the citizens from the stranger's house, proving that the woman was right all along and that the shaman was working with the demon the entire time. In the film's final scene, Zhang Gu in his dying breath tells Hyo Jin that everything will be okay because he is a policeman. We see a sweet memory of happiness between he and Hyo Jin before the life fades from his eyes and the movie ends. I wanted to take a deeper dive and try to explain some of the more confusing aspects of this film. As previously stated, the film was purposely left open-ended for interpretation. There are many theories and analyses on the true meaning of the film and the events that take place. I'll be going over what makes the most sense to me, but feel free to comment down below and give me your interpretation of what you believe it all means. Starting from the very beginning, the film opens with Luke 2437. The significance of this Bible verse sets up the theme of doubt felt through throughout the film. The citizens cast doubt on the Japanese man from the moment he arrives in town. Due to their history, it is no secret that Japan and South Korea's relationship isn't very strong. This undoubtedly is a big contributing factor that leads the people of Gok Sung to mistrust his arrival and intentions. As we now know from having seen the ending of the film, the stranger is actually a demon, or rather his body is possessed by a demon. When we first see him in the film's opening scene, the Japanese man is baiting a fishing line and mumbling 
mumbling something inaudible. This symbolizes the demon's true intent, revealed by Il Guang in a conversation with Zhang Gu. The demon simply cast out the bait, not even he knows what he'll catch. The demon's intent is solely to cause death and chaos to Gok Sung and its residents. This entire plotline is foreshadowed in this brilliant movie poster for the film. We see the mountainous terrain of Gok Sung, with a fishing hook and horns looming over the region. The demon most closely resembles the Japanese crow Tengu, a supernatural yokai from Japanese folklore. The Tengu have long been known in Buddhism as evil beings who love to cause chaos and mischief. They have been known to possess people and disguise themselves as Buddhist monks. Several crows are seen throughout the film. The very first crow we see is in Hongguk's bedroom, right in front of what appears to be a huge bird's nest. I consider the crows to be a type of emissary for the demon. One can be heard crashing right on top of Hyojin's bedroom right after she gets sick and is probably the same crow the shaman found in the jar of soy sauce. <laughs> Finally, while searching through the Japanese man's house, Zhang Gu also finds a book relating to birds. I believe that the Japanese man was formerly a Buddhist shaman that was possessed by the crow Tengu. I do not know at which point in time he became possessed, however, I believe it was long before he came to Gok Sung. The Japanese man's house has several items which provide us proof of his humanity before his possession. We see an altar dedicated to his parents as well as the decapitated statue of the Buddha. The statue was possibly decapitated by by the Tengu and wrapped in a red string as a form of disrespect and to seal its power. Throughout the film, the Japanese man shows zero signs of human emotion when he is possessed by the Tengu. The only times he shows emotions are when the Tengu temporarily leaves his body after the ritual. The Japanese man is pursued by Zhang Gu and his goons and displays shock, fear, and eventually despair. So what was that all about? Well, we now know that the shaman Il Guang was working alongside the demon the whole time. None of the citizens seem to notice that the shaman possibly appeared at the same time as the Japanese man. Seeing as they already held great prejudice and doubt toward the man, it was easy to associate all the weird and terrible things happening to him. He himself was the bait. The mysterious Japanese stranger arrives in town and people begin to get sick and seemingly possessed. The Korean shaman, the hook, reels them in with a false ritual that is actually meant to fully complete the demonic possession. In a small town like Guk Sung, word of mouth essentially means everything. Negative word of mouth was what turned people against the stranger, while positive word of mouth was what drew people to the shaman, who was just as much a stranger to the people of Gok Sung as the Japanese man. One of the early rumors was that the stranger sexually assaulted the woman whose house burned down. This hints at the possibility that the disease is initially spread through sexual contact. While Zhang Gu and Sung Buk are having drinks, they see a woman with the boils on her neck. This woman is later seen consulting the shaman, and the guardian is seen in possession of her sweater at the end of the film, giving us much more insight into the actual possession process. The disease is initially spread through sexual contact, the demon then takes possession of a personal item, an individual becomes possessed, the shaman is then contacted and performs the ritual, which actually completes the possession and causes the possessed to commit murder. The shaman or the demon then takes a picture of the possessed, capturing their souls and turning them into a mindless, flesh-eating zombie. The only person to become possessed possessed who didn't seem to follow those steps was Sung Buk. However, I believe that both he and Isam were personally targeted by the demon for their involvement in disturbing his home with Zhang Gu. This theory takes on a whole darker meaning as Hyojin herself was possibly sexually assaulted by the demon. He first takes interest in Hyojin when he sees her spending time with her father across the river. The woman's house is burned down that night and Hyojin brings her father a set of clothes at the police station. Before walking out, her hair clip falls on on the floor. This is the last time we see Hyojin before she becomes possessed. I believe that while she was walking home alone, she met the Japanese man who then sexually assaulted her and took her shoe. Keep in mind that the demon was lurking nearby and was even noticed by Zhang Gu at the crime scene. The very next day, Zhang Gu is then told the rumor that the Japanese man is a rapist, which is no coincidence. While looking through her notebook, Zhang Gu sees images drawn by Hyojin that possibly depict her own rape. When hired by Zhang Gu to exercise 
exorcise the demon from Hyojin, Il Guang is actually performing a ritual to fully complete her demonic possession. He chops down what appears to be a Zhang Sung, a village guardian totem, and begins piercing it with metal stakes. This causes Hyojin excruciating pain and removes any protection she has, making her body fully vulnerable for the demon to possess her. This is why the shaman warned Zhang Gu not to interfere, but he ends up doing so anyways, unknowingly temporarily saving his daughter. At the same time, we see the demon performing his own ritual to bring Park Chun-bei back to life. Director Na Hong-jin purposely shows these two rituals in a way that leads the audience to believe they are happening simultaneously. This is meant to trick the audience into thinking that Il Guang is casting out the demon from Hyojin and causing harm to the Japanese man who crawls away in pain. However, it was actually the mysterious woman causing him pain. The mysterious woman is the guardian protector of Gok Sung and in this moment casts out the Tengu from the Japanese man. This is why when he finally comes to, he is shivering from cold and appears extremely afraid. The Japanese man has regained control of his body and is frightened by the sight of the powerful woman. Il Guang, the Japanese stranger, and the village protector are all wearing white robes and this is meant to confuse the audience as to who is truly good and who is evil. However, the woman's good nature was hinted at in a biblical reference. He who is without sin casts the first stone. The next day, Zhang Gu and his crew are chasing the man who at this point is no longer possessed by the demon. This is why he is displaying a true sense of fear and begins to cry on his own after being pursued. He notices the woman looking at him from afar and begins running after her. It is my belief that he is running after her seeking for help that she does not want to provide. Remember that while she is the guardian protector for the town, she has a very specific way of helping and never gets directly involved. Also, being that the Japanese man is a stranger, she may not be allowed to help him. The Japanese man somehow falls right into Zhang Gu's truck and is subsequently thrown off the side of the mountain. This is the moment that Zhang Gu commits a sin and further complicates things for the guardian trying to protect his family. I've always been kind of confused as to how the Japanese man fell off the side of the mountain in the first place. The reason that makes the most sense to me is that he somehow tripped and fell thanks to the supernatural involvement by the Tengu. This was the trap set by the demon for Zhang Gu to commit a sin, which explains the shaman's quote right after. Zhang Gu is given one last opportunity by the guardian to save his family. This is essentially a final showdown between the guardian and the demon, who have been fighting for control over Zhang Gu's family. Zhang Gu's faith is being tested one last time. However, as he does for a majority of the film, he allows his emotions to motivate his decision and allows him to easily be manipulated by the shaman's final phone call. Zhang Gu sees his daughter's hair clip and realizes that the woman has been wearing the belongings of some of the residents and immediately jumps to the conclusion that she is evil. He ignores the fact that the Japanese man was also in possession of items belonging to the residents to include his own daughter's shoe. The demon used their belongings to possess the residents while the woman was using them to protect them. In this moment, Zhang Gu loses faith in the woman, which is reflected in the grayness of her skin. He ignores her pleas and breaks the trap she laid out for the demon by crossing the threshold into his house. It is ultimately Zhang Gu's doubt and lack of faith throughout the film that leads to his and his family's demise. Which finally brings us to the shaman Il Guang. There were several visual clues that hinted at his involvement with the demon. He was seen by Zhang Gu wearing a Japanese fundoshi just like the stranger. Prior to conducting the death hex ritual, we saw a shot of Park Jun bais residence as if a ritual had just taken place. When approached by the guardian, his nose bleeds profusely and he begins to throw up. He rushes home in fear and attempts to pray to Buddha. One of the candles mysteriously goes out and a crow falls dead right in front of him. This appears to be a warning from the crow Tengu, reminding him of who he should truly be afraid of. The shaman tries to drive out of town anyways, but is deterred by the swarm of locusts, some by the demon to turn him around. Now, while I truly believe the shaman to be evil, I still believe that he is human and willingly helping the demon the entire time. He is very extravagant and always displays some kind of human emotion. It is a common belief that making a deal with the devil can bring a large amount of fame and wealth to an individual, but at a cost. This is exactly what Il Guang has gotten himself into. He has made a deal with the Tengu to help him terrorize the village and bring about chaos. In return, he amasses a large amount of wealth from the citizens who pay for his rituals. As I previously mentioned, Il Guang is extravagant. He dresses lavishly and doesn't act like a typical humble Buddhist shaman. Another clue that hints at his humanity is that his name is actually revealed. The Japanese man 
and the Guardian, being supernatural beings, are not given names, as well as a couple guys who are literally just credited as friend, jean -Gu's wife as the wife, and his mother-in-law as, well, <clears throat> You get the point. In a deleted scene that seemingly takes place after the end of the film, the Japanese man is seen sitting at a bus stop on a pretty empty road. He tries to lure a little girl across the road with some candy, but she is pulled back by her mother. The old man sitting next to her is staring intensely at the stranger and possibly knows something is off about him. Il Guang then shows up in his car and ubers the Japanese man away. The Guardian watches in despair as the two drive off into the distance. She failed to protect her village from their evil evil, and being that she is the village guardian, she is unable to give chase. Also, I don't think she has a car. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was The Wailing. This is, without a doubt, one of the most complex films I have ever seen, and my favorite horror movie of all time. So much care and detail went into the making of this masterpiece that still leaves me confused to this day. But my friends, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and my attempt to explain and interpret the film's events, themes, and meanings. I would love to discuss your interpretations of the film in the comments down below. Thank you all for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.